Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remain standing for the arrival of the official party, the singing of the national anthem, and the invocation. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Colors, right shoulders, arms! Major Corwin Smith will now give the invocation. I invite you to please join me in prayer. Mighty God, it is a good thing to have the opportunity to give honor and recognition where it is deserved. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to appreciate a special group of individuals that have proven themselves worthy of such recognition. These inductees have been vital to not only DR, DLA, but our country through their time serving in DLA energy. Their leadership, service, and dedication to the DLA mission are factors for the great success we have had as a nation in very critical times. Many of us in uniform understand the great support we have and need to complete the mission for our country, which often comes from those not in uniform. These inductees were a part of that by outstanding accomplishments and sacrifices to ensure the support for our warfighters. So, Lord, we ask that you bless our time today as we show appreciation and thanks. We also want to thank the families for their support, loving, and encouragement they have shown 
enable leads and inductees to continue the mission. Lord, some of us, our spiritual study reminds us what it took for great heroes of faith to do extraordinary things in the face of challenges. You show us these examples so we have lives to emulate, so we too can do great things. Similarly, these inductees have shown characteristics and qualities of how to serve as examples for many of us here at DLA. May their examples inspire us to be dedicated and realize that each person plays an important part of the success of our nation. We thank you again for this time, and it is in your mighty name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Smith. Thank you all, and please be seated. What a great day. Welcome to the inaugural Defense Logistics Agency Energy Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Today, we honor six former members of the DLA Energy Team who demonstrated a unique and enduring contribution in support of our mission. Today's inductees are John S. Bartenhagen, Mr. Edward Biddle, Marshall R. Gore, Jr., William P. Bill Moon, Donald Pesca, and Bill Robinson. At this time, At this time, I want to give a special thanks and appreciation to the former DLA Energy employees who are in the, uh, uh, in the uh, auditorium. And more than anything else, a special warm welcome to the family and the inductees who have come here today to join us in celebrating this great occasion. Thank you so much for being here. The DLA Energy Hall of Fame was established to honor and preserve the memory of past associates for their exceptional leadership service, dedication to duty, and contribu contributions in supporting the DLA mission. The six individuals we are inducting today are extremely worthy of the recognition. Each of them made singular, outstanding contributions to DLA energy and in supporting the warfighter. Their leadership, hard work, and commitment serve as examples for us all to emulate. They represent the best of DLA energy.
and gentlemen, it's my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce the DLA Energy Commander, Brigadier General Mark McLeod. So what an exciting morning. Uh, I can't believe the emotion in the room. Um, <clears throat> from the people that were just, uh, you know, captured on uh, Miss Irene's face alone, uh, the folks that have been working this literally for years to make this happen, uh, you got to feel something special today. Um, I feel like I'm a bit of a kindred spirit to World War II. I mean, I have a daughter that is uh, also of that generation, I, I do say. So the history and the heritage of this organization, you know, as you saw with the uh, with the reference in the video, uh, the origins dating back to the Army-Navy Petroleum Board, it actually starts earlier than that. Uh, 1941, President Roosevelt sent a note to uh, the Department of the Interior, Harold Ickes, uh, of some renowned and uh, fame uh, in his career as well. But he asked him to, to form a consortium of folks that would come together and, uh, and solve the problems uh, of the war. Uh, the unprecedented quantities of fuel that were going to be required uh, actually mandated that a different construct uh, be brought together. Very early on in the war, um, there was a quote I looked up in a, in a, a book, uh, the Army Service Forces in World War II, and they actually described how the military was operating at the time. And it said in almost every instance where procurement cooperation eventually developed between the, uh, the Army Service Force and the Navy, it was only after some difficulty had first begun to hamper operations. So I'm really glad to see that things have never changed over the 71 years, because <laughs> we still fight with the Navy every day. But it gives you a sense for why this special organization had to be stood up. So Harold Ickes um, took to this task and brought a guy by the name of Ralph Davies on board. He was the vice president of Standard Oil at the time, Standard Oil of California. And that marriage of, of the military requirement and the power of the commercial industry started from the first days of this organization. And it's still that way today. And the marvelous achievements of the oil companies in the United States that brought to bear in this war are really remarkable. Six billion of the seven billion gallons of fuel that were burned were with American oil from the United States during that time. And it's this consortium, it's this specialness of, uh, of the progenitors of DL Energy that made that happen. And uh, another quote, the petroleum industry was so well organized, and this is going to sound really familiar even in our words today. The petroleum industry was so well organized in the United States that it was able, through existing storage and distribution channels, to meet all domestic military requirements. That's global military requirements. We say the same thing today as we do war games. Shoot, we were saying this last week in our UCOM war game. Nothing changes. That rich history has evolved over the years since those early days. Our growing authorities, our growing responsibilities that you have all inherited and that they helped launch are where we are today. I've been lucky to be a part of a couple of organizations in my career that had this really rich sense. The most recent one was when I was in the desert. I would belong to the 379th uh, uh, air, uh, air Wing. And the 379th actually dates its origins back to World War II and the Triangle K Bomber Group. And I felt a real special association with that because I had a great commander out there by the name of Charlie Lyon who really instilled in us this combination of history and heritage. And heritage in the military is a concept of airplanes and campaigns and its rich association with large battles. In this particular business, it's a little bit different. We have had a rich history in this organization over the years, but the heritage associated with those things that are primarily military don't exist for us. This is our heritage. And for years, we have neglected this because it's the relationships that you guys enjoy with one another that form between the military that make this the true power that it is. It's the Cameron Station spirit that I always talk about. And there was a specialness in that group. And that's what this is all about today. So today, we take that next step. Culminating, as I mentioned a little earlier, the collective efforts of a lot of people, some of whom I will, uh, I will mention a little bit later on uh, towards the end of this. But this is, as I said, the next step in our heritage. These quiet warriors who do their jobs brilliantly, I want this to be, as I said uh, at the end of the video, I want this to be regardless of rank, regardless of grade, there are great things that each of you do every day in this organization. It's not just about old geezers like this up on a board. It is about what you guys do every day, and that's what we're here to celebrate. 
So John Barton Hagen, his wife Marion, son John and his wife Carol and their children Elizabeth and Johnny are here with us this morning. Bill Robinson, his wife Patricia, here all the way from Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, Don Peshka and his wife Claudine, Ed Biddle and his wife Mary. Marshall Gore, represented by his family, traveled from Glen Allen, Virginia, son Robert and wife Sharon, their daughter Jennifer and brother-in-law Ron Harris. And then, uh, of course, Bill Moon uh, from Houston, Texas, uh, his represented by his uh, wife Faye, who is with us today, accompanied by her daughter Kathy, uh, husband Lawrence Peters, Kathy's son Dakota, and his girlfriend Shelby. We are really happy that all of you guys are here to, uh, to celebrate this family event. And that's truly what DLRNG is. It's a family. More than anything, gentlemen, what you guys represent is, as I said, that heritage link that we need uh, moving forward because uh, ultimately us having that heritage is a sense of who you were so that we have a better sense of who we are. And that's truly the traditions of history and heritage that, that, that this represents today. So we celebrate a legacy that you established in this organization that you have now since passed on. And it's passed on to the people that are sitting in this audience. It's the Atwoods who unfortunately is off doing the things that I should be doing right now with the, with the headquarters, but it's the Earhart the Ahern, the Blank, the Shepherd, Payne, Orange, Tinner, Gray, Barnett, Petersons, the Griffiths, the Manzieras, and countless other folks that have taken the leadership mantle in this organization that have continued to evolve it, that have continued to innovate it over the years. That's something that you all should be extremely proud of, as proud of we as, as we are of you. So I'll close by saying, uh, by quoting something that Ralph Davies, the, the deputy for the, uh, for the initial organization said, at no time did the services lack for oil in the proper quantities, in the proper kinds, and at the proper places during World War II. And that statement is as true today as it was 71 years ago, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, thank you very much for coming. This is a really special event. Our first inductee is Mr. John S. Bartenhagen, who served as the Deputy Director and Director of Facilities Management. Mr. Bartenhagen, will you please join Brigadier General McLeod center stage. Mr. John S. Bartenhagen served in a number of key positions within the Defense Fuel Supply Center and the Defense Energy Support Center, Defense Logistics Agency, from September 13, 1981 to April 3, 2007. His long-term assignments as the Deputy Director and Director of the Facilities Management will always be his lasting legacy. His leadership in the Facilities Management Maintenance Repair Environmental Program and the Fuels Optimization Program blazed the trail for efforts that continued today to enhance the worldwide bulk petroleum infrastructure and distribution systems that support America's warfighters. A respected leader in the field of engineering and petroleum logistics within the Department of Defense, Mr. Barton Hagen is a man of unquestioned integrity whose dedication to excellence was demonstrated in the many initiatives implemented by him that continue to have a positive impact on the fuels and logistics, fuels and logistics communities to this day. He has brought great credit to himself the Defense Logistics Agency, and the Department of Defense. Our next presentation honors Mr. Edward J. Biddle, who is the Deputy Director of Contracting and Production Defense Fuel Supply Center. Mr. Biddle, can you please join Brigadier General McLeod? <laughs> Mr. Edward J. Biddle served in key energy acquisition management and contracting positions in the Defense Fuel Supply Center Defense Logistics Agency and the Department of Defense Energy Policy Office from July of 1963 to March 1998. As a respected leader, in the fields of acquisition and petroleum logistics within the Department of Defense and the petroleum industry, Mr. Biddle is a man of unquestioned integrity whose dedication to excellence was demonstrated in the many initiatives implemented by him and continue to have a positive impact 
on the fuels and logistics communities to this day. Mr. Biddle firmly solidified the Defense Energy Support Center's position as a leading expert for petroleum acquisition matters and the fuels availability, contract management, and business relationships within the petroleum industry. He has brought great credit to himself, the Defense Logistics Agency, and the Department of Defense. It is with great distinction that we honor our third inductee, Marshall R. Gore, Jr., with a posthumous induction into the Defense Logistics Agency Hall of Fame. Mr. Gore's son, Robert Gore, will now join Brigadier General McLeod center stage. Marshall Gore, a World War II veteran and member of the greatest generation, began his career August 1974 as a facilities manager, GS-12, at the Defense Fuel Supply Center, which is now DLA Energy. He served 19 years as a distributions facility specialist, and in 1986, he was promoted to Chief Facilities Management Branch Chief and retired as a GS-14 after 35 years of faithful service in 2009. Marshall Gore distinguished himself with outstanding service to DLA and our nation as a distribution facilities specialist. His lasting contributions to DLA serve as an example to follow. His significant efforts to eliminate waste and efficiency by reviewing DESI contracts to ensure terms and conditions were strictly adhered in regards to funding. As part of an agency-wide Department of Defense effort to eliminate waste and increase efficiency, Mr. Gore revealed, re reviewed DESI funding documents annually to see which unspent allocated funds under multi-year contracts and military interdepartmental purchase requests could be returned to DESI. In 1999, Mr. Gore and his staff deobligated a total of $50 million from various contractual agreements. His distinct accomplishments will leave a legacy of superior combat support to the warfighter and a lasting impression of selfless service and leadership in the agency, which reflects great credit upon himself and the Department of Defense. We are honored to induct him into the DLA Energy Hall of Fame. <laughs> Our fourth presentation honors William P. Bill Moon with a posthumous induction into the Defense Logistics Agency Energy Hall of Fame. Mr. Moon's grandson, Mr. Dakota Thomas, please join Brigadier General McLeod center stage. A true icon in the fuel community, highly regarded for his extensive experience and sage advice, Mr. Moon is recognized for his significant contributions and more than 50 years of dedicated service to DLA while serving as the distribution manager for the Defense Fuel Regions Americas, Defense Fuel Supply Center in Houston, Texas, during the period of March 1969 to July 1998. During this period, Mr. Moon developed numerous innovative processes to meticulously manage more than 17.8 billion gallons of DLA-owned bulk fuel, war reserve, and peacetime operating stock better, faster, and cheaper. William Bill Moon was a true icon in the fuel community, highly regarded for his extensive experience and sage advice. A decorated war hero, staunch patriot, iconic civil service was personal conduct, epitomized the highest levels of ethics, dedication, loyalty, and selfless service within DLA, his sterling reputation and legacy lives on throughout the Department of Defense fuel community. Our next presentation honors Mr. Donald Pesca, 
who served the dual role as Deputy Director of Bulk Fuels and Chief of Contracting for many years. Mr. Pesca, please join the General. Mr. Donald E. Pesca has distinguished himself for outstanding contributions to DLA Energy as a leader and outstanding procurement professional during his 16 years of service supporting the warfighter through his active participation in critical events that include Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, and DLA Energy's Economic Price Adjustment Fuel Case, defending over $3 billion in claims. His role as Chief of the Contract for DLA Energy Bulk Fuels, along with his knowledge and experience with the Department of Defense Energy Mission, as well as his reputation through the Department of Defense and commercial petroleum communities, were invaluable assets in accomplishing many challenging missions that continue to have a positive impact on DLA Energy today. Mr. Pesca has brought great credit upon himself, the Defense Logistics Agency, and the Department of Defense. Our sixth and final presentation honors Mr. Bill Robinson, who served as Deputy Director, Defense Energy Support Center. Mr. Robinson, can you please join General McLeod Center Stage? <laughs> Mr. W. A. Bill Robinson served in a number of key positions within the Defense Fuel Supply Center and the Defense Energy Support Center. His long-term assignments as Deputy Director in the Defense Fuel Supply Center Directorate of Supply Operations and Dire Deputy Director and Director of the DESE Bulk Petroleum Fuels Commodity Branch Business Unit will always be his lasting legacy. His leadership set the standard for fuel support to the warfighter. His business acumen and vision into the future ensured continued uninterrupted support to our customers during some of the most trying times in our history. A respected leader in the fields of bulk petroleum supply and logistics, Mr. Robinson is a man of unquestioned integrity, whose dedication to excellence was demonstrated in the many initiatives implemented by him that continue to have a positive impact on the fuels and logistics communities to this day. He has brought great credit to himself, the Defense Logistics Agency, and the Department of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General McLeod. So, uh, yeah. And it is uh, certainly nothing of this scale, and a quick ceremony, but a quick and appropriate ceremony, but certainly nothing of this scale goes on without the contributions of a lot of people. So uh, let, me, let me laud a few of those people right now. And over the years, I mean, uh, I know Pete Crane did a lot with this too, and Pete wasn't here with us today, but I know he did a lot of the policy steps. So uh, uh, if you're watching on the internet, Pete, I uh, hope you got this invitation. God bless, you did a great job. Wouldn't be here without you. Uh, Kara West, uh, another absolutely brilliant job doing the, uh, doing the national anthem. Uh, starts us off with a special tone, always a great thing. Uh, Chaplain, uh, great job. Um, also sets the tone appropriate for, uh, for not only our environment, but the, the interface that we have with our, with our civilian partners as well. So very much thank you, the Joint Service Color Guard as well. I know those guys have probably already gone off to do their next series of uh, Present the Colors, and uh, they always make that special. So our escorts, Bruce Plank, Gabby Earhart, and these are folks that not only were doing escort duty, these are people that have lived this journey for the last three plus years, according to some of the conversations that we were having a little bit earlier. Uh, Kevin Ahern, uh, Greg Adrelitis, uh, Cindy Smith, uh, Dave Van Winkle, uh, one of our new guys I just met, welcome aboard, uh, Colonel John Martin. Let me share something that uh, 
that uh, I, I mentioned with, uh, with Bill when he came up on the audience. And I was looking at Cindy's face. And there was an emotion that was being captured in Cindy's face, reflected back at Bill, that I said, you know, there, there's, a, there's, there's some emotion there. And, and it, was, it, it, was living, it was living the past and a lot of great things that I'm sure connected between those two people. And that's what this is about. And I saw it on a lot of your faces today. So God bless. That's really cool. Uh, we couldn't have done this without Miss Irene. And it was happy to see your smiling face at the beginning of this as well. Uh, you've been under a lot of pressure to make this work. And uh, you have done phenomenal. Well done. So I, I, I approach Miss Liz next, uh, because Miss Liz had the vision for how we wanted to do the Kunkel. Uh, we were talking earlier why this didn't happen uh, a little earlier in the process. And it was largely because uh, we were having a fight with the headquarters about putting this space out in the corridors. And uh, tremendous costs. They didn't want to give up the space. So we looked internal. So we made, it, we made the Kunkel part into our history uh, hall of fame as well. And we were toying around ideas until Miss Liz got involved. And she gave us a vision that she had seen in someplace else that she worked. And it became this marriage of technology and history that I think is just the coolest thing. Like I told you before, we couldn't have, you couldn't have designed this any better to meet the vision that I didn't tell you. And that's an amazing thing. Thank you so very much. Nikki Burns, uh, PAO, John Stacks. Uh, I'm on my crease here. Pardon me, Stan Janizak, Estee uh, Pender. Uh, Miss Fran, as always, Sasha, Jason, uh, Mass Sergeant James, Mass Sergeant Grady, our, uh, our Leap Alanos, uh, who are still here today in uniform. You guys are, did great on this. And of course, uh, the ladies of the ensemble, my beautiful wife and generous, always generous in things like this, Laura. Uh, my daughter Emma's here today. I don't know what she did she, other than skip school, but uh, <laughs> she's here today. Now she actually did some stuff too. So, and then the other ladies. Uh, uh, Tanya Bridges, Patty Henry, Sherry De Silva, Sharon Allen, Becky Martin, and uh, Pin Cheney. Uh, you guys uh, will make the next part of this special for everybody as well as we continue to live this family event today. So my thanks. I couldn't have asked for more. You guys have knocked it out of the park. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Please rise for the benediction, the playing of the service melody, and the departure of the official party. Chaplain? Let's pray. We thank you, O oh God, again for this time, this great family time, and this time of remembrance and appreciation. And now, Lord, as we continue to look forward to doing great things within DLA and our country, we ask for your, for your continued guidance and safety. Bless each and every home care. Bless us and keep us healthy until we meet again. In your holy name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well done, sir.
Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our 2016 DLA Energy Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Thank you for all being here and helping to make this a very memorable event. Please join us for the reception in the rotunda where you can greet the honorees and enjoy the refreshments. Cool. Nice job.